Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. This is the second edition of our uh, Nerve Center Model Club. Today we're going to be talking about uh, interacting with uh, databases. Anyway, the goal of today is to talk about um, how you can use databases within, you know, models to, you know, add value to, you know, be able to log data for reporting purposes later, to access data for use uh, within triggers to, you know, add uh, perhaps some referential data or some uh, context to correlation. Uh, there's many, many uses. So what I'm going to do is cover two use cases or two sets of models. Uh, one is, is pretty straightforward. It's, it's uh, basically collecting CPU usage and logging it to a database table um, so that you can, you know, run reports against it later. The other will be a, an alarm that I've heard people ask about many times. It, I think it's going to be pretty useful. Um, I've always, you know, when I talk with, uh, with customers and users, I hear that, you know, they'd love to be able to save state in between, you know, reboots or, or failovers or even, you know, if you're just uh, restarting nerve center. And the reality is, you know, to save every single state for every model is, is kind of unrealistic. And it, the overhead of doing that would be, you know, pretty high. So if you consider certain models that are important that are actually generating alerts or tickets, you know, there's probably one to two states that really matter. And if you could re-establish those states, um, then you, you know, you wouldn't have to regenerate a ticket or, or an alert or whatever. So um, basically what we're going to do is show an, uh, an alarm that, uh, or a model that uses the same basic uh, SNMP status that, that comes with the product, but adds this ability to save state in a database. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Let me first show, <clears throat> this is the model for logging to a database. Now this is really pretty simple. What we're, what we're going to trigger on here is the connect or not connect to the database for each uh, instance that we're going to be writing to the database. Now, I can remember which poll was the right one here. So this is what the poll looks like. Basically, in the last model club, we talked about using um, other, you know, something other than SNMP within a poll, and we talked about how you could add Perl modules if, if they do not exist to allow you to, you know, extend the, uh, the use of Perl within Nerve Center. Basically, what we're using here is DBI as the module, as the Perl module, as you can see. In reality, DBI is something that is embedded in the product. We've shipped the product with uh, DBI for quite some time now. And uh, the only thing you need for connecting to a database, obviously, is a database, a database instance somewhere. It can be remote. It doesn't have to be on the same box. Uh, you obviously need the credentials to log in. You need the DBI, which is going to be there. And then you're going to need the DBD module, which is the database driver. And again, for MySQL, that is included in Nerve Center. It has been for quite some time. Um, so basically, uh, here we are at a point where we're defining that we need to use DBI. We're actually using the specific timestamp for MySQL. So that's another module that we do include. We're defining what we want to collect. And then we're defining our connection. And those are the first you know, components of the poll itself. The next thing we're doing is setting up, you know, making sure we have a connection. We're doing the actual insert, and we're defining the specific columns we want to insert into. If we have any issues with connection, that's where we either fire the trigger, of we connected okay, or we did not. Now there are 
many, actually a number, uh, maybe not many, but there are a number of different ways of defining the insert. And some you would use over others based on performance or flexibility. I was going for flexibility um, at this point, and um, it really, because I wanted to, to call out the specific fields, because I'm using a, a, a schema that is kind of generic. Now, if you wanted to, you could define a table in your database that is, is very specific for just this purpose. But in our case, we developed this particular model for use in an upcoming release uh, to be uh, distributed in the product so that you are able to store metrics and report on them. Another database that I've worked with here in Nerve Center is one called SQL Lite, which is S-Q-L-I-T-E. It's a very, very simple database. It uh, allows, uh, basically it kind of creates a flat file uh, database uh, and tables. I guess any database really is just a flat file on disk at the, at the end of the day anyway, for the most part. But uh, it's very simple and it, it allows you to keep data in a database as opposed to perhaps using a, an in-memory hash. And the, the, you know, the con concept here is using a, a simple database, whether it be MySQL or Oracle or SQLite or Sybase or whatever, um, the advantage over a database is A, it, it, that the persistence, it, it's written there in the database, and B, that you can bring things in and out of Nerve Center wh where you really can't do that as easily in a hash. So um, that's really kind of some of the advantages of, of being able to use a database. So that is the, you know, right to database. Again, you can use, you know, any metrics, any, you know, anything that's an SNMP object and, and just simply write it into the database. Again, we're going to provide these uh, models for everyone uh, after this session. So you can download them and try them and uh, the good news is if, if because of Nerve Center and the power and the flexibility, if you want to do it a different way, you know, and you need more performance than, than flexibility, you know, there's tons of documentation on the web about Perl DBI and performance. Also, the, you know, there's a number of books out there. I would definitely recommend the O'Reilly. Uh, Perl DBI is, is uh, pretty good, pretty extensive. Let me move on to the next model. I guess I'll just go ahead and close that one. The next model is, as I mentioned, taking a variation, and, and I've had a lot of, again, I've had a lot of people ask about this concept of saving state. So here we have a pretty straightforward model that, you know, at least part of it ships with the product. And this is for simply detecting, you know, node up down. And using Nerve Center, you know, I'm sure you're all aware of how we, we will use SNMP as our first test to see if a node is up. Back off to ICMP if we're unable to access SNMP. And then basically move to a state of either agent down, unreachable, or actual device down. Now in this particular model, I decided that unreachable and device down were probably the two states you'd want to restatus. Agent down, you know, if you really wanted to, fine, you could add that too. But really what we're doing from ground right here is merely opening, you know, starting with a pole. The pole, however, is not against the, the actual network. This pole, this initial pole off of ground is against a database table. And if we look at one of these triggers, we can see, you know, this is the actual pole here. And all I'm doing is, is basically, because of the property groups, all of the nodes that are in the proper, you know, have the proper properties are going to be, you know, queried for in this database. And if the node exists in the database, we're going to take a look at each state that, you know, which is just one field. And if I see a node down for that device, I'm going to fire the go to node down trigger and go directly to node down without passing through any other states. Same thing with the unreachable. And if any other condition occurs, well, node up would be the other one. I'll go to the node up state. 
Um, if I don't see the note in there, for some reason it, it got added, um, it just simply wasn't in the table for whatever reason, then I'm just at that point going to go ahead and add it and write it into the table. Um, we'll see that because I'm firing, I'm firing a, a check, you know, to, well, here it is where I'm writing, doing the not in the table, and I'm actually calling a subroutine to write it into the table, which is the, the node, you know, write, write the state up, in other words. So if the node was already down the last time this model was running, whether it be a restart, whether it be a move the, the node to ground, whatever, you're going to immediately go to a, a node down or unreachable uh, based on what you read as that previous state. Now this would be really useful, or even more useful, providing you use a database that's not on the same box as your primary nerve center. If your nerve center you know, instance has a hardware failure, the box goes down, and you want to bring up a backup system, well, then you can access the same database that, that this guy was writing to, that the primary was writing to, and restatus your backup so that you're not re-initiating alerts or tickets or whatever. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that poll real quick, and, you know, you can just see what I'm doing. It's, again, pretty straightforward. I've been writing this table with Perl subroutines based on triggers. Whenever I enter, you know, the node down state for the first time, I'm writing, you know, a node down. And basically what I'm doing is I'm selecting from that state table. I'm plugging in the question mark of the node name here uh, for, as a variable. Um, and I'm looking at the highest timestamp for that particular node, meaning the last state, and that's how I make my determination of, of firing the trigger. And again, we're going to provide these models so you can try them yourself. If you look, when I go to a, a node down, you'll see that I'm just simply calling a Perl subroutine. It says, hey, write to the state table that the node is down. Oh, one of the other thing I wanted to mention here is that uh, I'm using a a feature in Nerve Center that's actually been there for a little while where I can change the color of my transitions based on uh, my to or from state or even a custom color um, to help make it a little bit more a little more readable when there's a many you know many triggers like this. Anyways, that is about all I was going to cover with you know with these two models. Hopefully this helped show everyone that you know using a database in conjunction with Nerve Center is pretty really pretty easy. It's just a matter of making sure that you have the database driver. Again, my SQL DVD is already there, uh, as well as the, the uh, specific MySQL timestamp format uh, capability. I've got two ideas for the next one. Um, one is, is potentially to, um, for those of you who work with um, you know, virtual environments, specifically VMware and ESX servers. Um, it, it seems that, you know, that VMware has taken away some of the SNMP capabilities for directly querying uh, individual, you know, VM instances, individual machines, and they've moved towards sort of an API type of capability. Um, I found that there is a Perl API and then it works quite well in conjunction with Nerve Center. So I'm thinking that might be our next one. Um, I'm pretty open to suggestions at this point. So within the next 30 to, you know, 40 or so days, we'll, we'll schedule the next one, you know, to be. And, um, you know, we'll come up with another interesting, hopefully, and relevant uh, webinar to help help show that Nerve Center can be used for a lot more than just, uh, you know, SNMP queries. Okay, I got a little feedback saying VMware would be great. Okay, good, good. Then maybe that's it. Okay, great. Other than that, I guess we'll, we'll end the session now and um, we'll take it from there.